Hello everyone and welcome to this video on another update for the add-on Mask Tools. There are several new features in this update, and if you don't know what Mask Tools is, it's an add-on that allows you to create some advanced texturing effects, similar to those that are found in professional texturing software. There are a large selection of painting effects and also some procedural effects that can be added to your 3D models. If you guys want to help support me, you can do a lot just by giving the video a like. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can share the video on social media with other fellow artists. Now let's take a look at some of the new features. The first new feature we'll look at is called Contrast Overlay, and it's located on the Mask Base node. What this does is takes into consideration the darker and lighter values of a flat 2D texture and then can exclude one or the other depending on which settings you choose. Here I'm trying to create a worn paint effect on these wooden planks. In this example, I can use the Invert Overlay option, which will allow me to switch between painting in between the bricks or on the faces of the bricks. And there are several other blending options to customize the look of this effect. Most important of which is the Adjust Overlay, which helps to fine-tune the shape. There are a ton of uses for this Contrast Overlay feature, whether you're creating grungy materials or nature assets for environments. It's very handy. In the last update, there were some wet map settings added to the Mask Base node, but they've been moved to a separate node now to make room for the new blending options. And quite frankly, it makes more sense for those options to be on a separate node anyway. But we can go over what those settings are again. When you paint on a texture that's connected to the wet map input, you're essentially affecting the roughness value of that material. You can use the depth slider to determine how deep those areas appear. You can invert the bump of that wet map. And the normal strength slider will just determine how much of the normal values of the textures beneath show through. And finally, you can adjust the roughness, which just determines how sharp those reflections are. Another feature that was added in the last update was the Mask Blend option. And this allows you to paint with textures that have a range of value and then preserve all of that bump information while completely separating those two sets of PBR textures. Now there's a new node called Bump Painter, which allows you to add bump without any color information, but still gives you a wide range of ways to customize this effect. And this is especially handy for game designers who need to get a lot of detail out of texture work rather than using physical geometry. So let's take a look at some of these settings. I'll just paint on some simple bump detail. And then on the Bump Painter node, I can use the Refine Bump to change the shape of this effect. I can invert the bump, and there's an option to add value to the bump. This is a technique used in digital painting to add contrast to areas that are meant to appear raised. Now I'm using one of the custom brushes that comes with mask tools to create these scratches along the metal and the wood. Now I can invert the bump and add value, but then choose to darken that value. And this adds another layer of depth to the material. But there are some more options on the Bump Painter node. In addition to all of the PBR inputs that transfer all of the previous texture information, there's another set of PBR inputs for cavity detail. And the cavity detail slider will detect the lowest points on your bump texture and add that set of PBR textures to it. And basically it's just adding that effect to low areas where dirt might collect. And we can even add noise and distortion to it to make it look a little more natural. When I scroll through all of my outputs, you can see here at the end I have this cavity mask output. And this can be used to add additional elements to your material. In this case, I'm putting it into the subsurface scattering input, but you could plug it into the emission or whatever. And now if we take a look at it in rendered view, we can see that we've added subsurface scattering just to that cavity detail. There are several new brushes added to version 1.3, and many of the detail brushes actually have transparent backgrounds now. So let's select one and set it up. Now that the background is transparent, you no longer need to change the blend type to add. You can just leave it at mix. 
You still, however, need to make sure that you set the mapping from tiled to viewplane and make sure that the random box is checked. And then change the fall off to this last option. Many of the new brushes are meant to simulate the results of real paint brushes. This makes the painting effect look a little more natural. And in addition to all of the new brushes, there are many improvements made to the previous existing brushes. Now there are a total of 47 textures and brushes that can be used in Mask Tools. Although Mask Tools keeps everything super organized and neat in the shader editor, it can be a little time consuming having to reconnect all of the inputs when you add a new node. But now there is a preset option. This sets up a chain of mask based nodes for you which are pre-connected. And you may be wondering why if mask nodes works as a timeline of sorts and a layer system moving from left to right, then why are these nodes separate and connected here? Well, I can show you with an example. Let's say I'm using the preset to texture this shield and I've already reached about this point in the timeline. So at this point, I'm going to add a stencil detail to the shield. So here I'm just mixing a wood material with a metal material. And I'll give it some bump detail as well. Okay, so this is looking all right. But if I go back to my preset and I start painting on this separate branch before it splits, then now instead of painting over that new detail, I'll be painting underneath of the detail. This is another great way of simulating, you know, where there are corners and, and grunge would collect naturally. We still have all of our color blending options that will only affect the materials, again, that happen before that split. And then anything that occurs to the right of that split will affect everything. And in the end, everything looks super neat and organized in the shader editor. I've also updated the user manual to include all of the new features. And something that I've been meaning to do for a while and people have been asking me for is a more complete tutorial on using all of these features to create a model, particularly when it comes to using displacement textures. But I've been putting it off just because I wanted to do this update and get all of these new features added. But now I can take the time and actually create some of this video training for people who are actually interested in the add-on and want to learn how to use some of these features. But that's it for this video. If you're interested in the add-on, I'll leave a link in the video description below. Also, follow me on social media if you want to keep up with any future updates. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.